You might have noticed that the world's not in a very good place right now. And that's really nothing new. That's the world is never in a good place. Right. That's the purpose of the world. The world systems are based on fear, lack. That's always the way it's been. If you look over the history of the human race, it's been one horror and war after another. It's a fear-based system. But we have a choice. We have a choice whether to react to that fear-based system in fear, or to respond with love. And it is a choice. That we make in every moment. To be in the world, but not of it. When our energy body is no longer contracted in fear, it, be, it expands in joy and love. And we become a blessing to the entire world. It isn't a question of denying the bad in the world, and it isn't a question of trying to reform piecemeal, one thing at a time, the bad in the world. It's a matter of recognizing our true and essential nature so that we become a blessing to the world and the world is thus and thereby transformed by us. Every person contributes an infinite amount of healing energy to this process. When you make the world wrong and set yourself over and apart from it, like you're over here being right and the world is over there being wrong and you have all kinds of advice about what people should be doing to make it right, that sets up a dualistic perspective which is inherently antagonistic and in conflict. By adopting a, a non-dualistic, loving, unitary perspective as nonsensical and illogical as it seems, that is the way to actually transform the world. But you can't do it for the purpose of transforming the world. You do it because it's your essential nature. When you realize, when you come to an understanding through, not even understanding, I mean, understanding is like a mental thing, but when you experience oneness through breath work like I have used, that's the process that I use. Um, as I said in my introduction to this Patreon, This during the, a particularly mind blowing breathwork session, I was shown a slight tweak on the process which led me to have um, expanded consciousness and 
to realize that I am not a separate entity and that that was not a temporary experience or a temporary state. It was, it became, it was permanent. I've had mystical experiences before and they usually only last a couple of minutes at best. This one was permanent, but that was not enlightenment. That simply led to the complete undoing. Well, you know what? It's in, it's in the write-up, the introductory write-up. So you can read that for yourself. But the point is, is that um, I want to make this freely available to everyone so that they can experience this non-dual oneness with the world and bring about a healing of the world before we become an extinct species, which if that happens, that's really will be fine too. Life will continue, will continue in some other form. However, there will be a lot of, it will entail much suffering. And um, if I can do something to prevent that suffering, then I will. So, you know, I don't know if you're coming to this because you want to pursue really in-depth spiritual work or if you just want to do some kind of um, self-improvement, personal growth program so that your relationships are less tense, better, your money situation improves. You're happier at your job. All of these things, you know, like I say, that's not really what the world is for. But all of these problems from the most mundane, you know, why am I always late for work, self-improvement kinds of things, all the way to the most uh, esoteric spiritual things, um, why am I unable to meditate without my mind wandering? All of, all of these, ultimately, the, the root of the problem is in the egoic mind, the conditioning from thousands of lifetimes, thousands of years. So you need or it's helpful to have a method of disengaging from all of that so that you become the witness to all of that. When that happens, your relationships become better, your material experience of the world becomes better. And your spiritual experience of the world becomes better. You know, ultimately, really, there's no difference between any of those things. You just think there are.
and it kind of involves a sort of like 180 flip. We think in our heads and we feel that we are in a body. None of that is true. When you have the experience of complete relaxation and an expanding and joyful and loving energy body, you'll, you will intuitively know that it is centered in the heart, but not the heart that pumps blood in the physical body because you will intuitively know that your physical body isn't even really here. And so your physical heart isn't even really here. These are all, it's just an energetic symbol for your mind to give you some way of interacting and relating with the world. But if you are one with the world, then you no longer need to relate with it because that's a dualistic perspective, right? So, you know, these teachings have been shared by sages for millennia, often in the form of poetry. Because they're very difficult to explain to the rational mind. And so the sages will often resort to poetic expressions in an effort to convey the meaning. And probably 99% of people who read those poems or hear the sages, have no idea what they're talking about. And you might, you know, find yourself in that place right now, listening to me. But if you are listening to me, there is a part of you, at least a part of you, that is ready for this. And over the course of um, the videos and essays and talks that I'm going to do for this Patreon, I think we can get a lot of people to that place they created me in their dream for the purpose of getting them to. So, um, I'm going to be doing a group breathe on May 28th. If you join at uh, any level, you can come to the group breathe. So a group breathe is we're going to be on Zoom and everybody, and I'll be watching everyone. We're going to be I'll, it'll be limited to how many people I can have on Zoom, um, and you'll be breathing. This is you know you'll be breathing. This is like full on hardcore rebirthing breath work, conscious connected intuitive energy breathing. Um, as I learned from the man who invented it, uh, Leonard Orr, he accidentally discovered it actually. And then he later on, he felt like he was led to it by Babaji, who was a Himalayan sage. You can read about him in autobiography of a yogi by 
Paramahansa Yogananda. And so um, it's pretty powerful. Um, you know, you sweat, you get chills, your hands spontaneously move into yoga mudras, even if you don't know what a yoga mudra is, um, altered states of consciousness. Leonard had a Christian ministry background, so he thought it was the Holy Spirit. Um, a lot of yoga people say it's Kundalini. It's, um, but it's a powerful... It's not like one of those things where you're wondering if anything is happening. Let's put it that way. And it's very healing. Um, it integrates suppressed uh, make wrongs, suppressed negative energies. It's just mind blowing. So I'll be doing that on the May 28th. Uh, the details are on the Patreon. Um, anybody that joins at any tier will be able to come to that for free. I'm also going to be doing sanghas, which will be just talks, live Zoom talks with interaction, hopefully, questions and answers, hopefully. You know, a, a lot of this really needs questions. It's like the mirror has no function if there's no one to reflect. And so those are the Zoom sagas. And then um, weekly I do Sunday sittings. The Sunday sittings, the difference between them and the sagas is the sittings are a mixture of instruction and spiritual talk and they're limited to about an hour, hour and a half. Um, the sanghas are going to be free form. We'll just go until nobody wants to go anymore. And they're going to be less instructional and more um, satsang, a sharing of the energy. And then, of course, the private sessions are by appointment over Zoom or in, you know, in person if you happen to live here in the Virgin Islands. You know, a lot of people use the breath work as kind of like a tool like a meditation tool to make their life better. But ultimately, it's a sacred initiation. I remember what Babaji said. People ask me for all kinds of things, but no one ever asked me for what I am. Few, few ask me for what I'm truly here to give. Okay, I think that's it for now. You guys have a great day. I love you all.